Hello, fellow Rebel Capitals. Hope you're well. So breaking news, the banks come out with a report that is probably the worst report financial data I have ever seen in my life. And I'm not exaggerating that. I'm going to show you a chart. It's going to completely blow your mind. Let's get right over to this article and check it out. This article, let me do the screen share. There we go. This article is from uh, Bitcoin.com, but I've seen it all over the, the news and the mainstream media. So U.S. bank lending drops by a record $105 billion in the last two weeks. Trillions moving to money market accounts. We already know that. Elon Musk warns trend will accelerate. I don't know why Elon Musk would be someone that you would go to for a quote on that. <laughs> it's like going to Matt Damon. It's like, who cares what this guy thinks? Uh, not to say that Elon Musk isn't a smart guy, but I would assume that the banking, the monetary system isn't his area of expertise. But let me just go over that one more time, the important part here. U.S. bank lending drops by record $105 billion in the last two weeks. Why is this important? Because you guys know from watching my videos, just having common sense, that if you have a debt-based monetary system, if you have an economy where consumer debt, corporate debt, sovereign debt is at all-time highs, the only way you can pay that debt is if you have more and more debt that's being created or if you have high velocity. Now, going into a recession, what happens to velocity? Slows down. So if you have a if you have credit declining on a net basis and you have velocity going down that that is a a recipe for disaster. A simple way to think about it is just the aggregate balance sheet of the real economy in the United States. So if we have the bank credit or bank lending dropping, what's going to happen to the money supply? It's going to go down. So if we can assume that one of the main reasons we had consumer price inflation is the money supply going up, if that's going down in a way which shrinks the consumer balance sheet, what does that mean for aggregate demand? You see, and this is another thing that the bond market, the inverted yield curve could be predicting. I mean, how does that play out with future banking crises if the lending continues to contract, not just in the United States, but even globally. I mean, that's what turns a recession into a flat-out depression. And that's why I'm seeing that this, that's why I'm saying that this is the worst chart. This is the worst data I've ever seen. Because it's unprecedented. I mean, there has been a couple times in history where the bank lending has dropped off a cliff to that to close to that degree. What we saw here with the 104.71 is a record, according to what I've read. But you have had times where it's come close. Just eyeballing this chart, it looks like maybe 80, 90 billion. That was during the dot-com bust, and as you would imagine, during the GFC. So once again, now we are seeing credit contract or bank lending contract to a higher degree than we saw during the GFC. And this has happened in the last two weeks, for heaven's sakes. So how does this play out if we see bank lending continue to contract throughout the rest of 2023? So when you look at a chart of loans and leases, which we've been looking at a lot on this channel, and I've used this for some whiteboards, it, it looks rather benign. But you can see what happens during a financial crisis or, you know, same thing during the Cerveza sickness is the amount of loans go down significantly and then they level out. That is not a sign of health. That is a sign that the, the stuff is hitting the fan. So you can't really see it because this chart goes back to like 1975. But when you zoom in, that's what takes us down to the pink chart. You can see really what's happening beneath the surface. 
And what's going to be fascinating is to compare this to the M1 and M2 money supply data that we get at the end of the month. And if that is continuing to go down, like it has to a significant degree over the past, let's say, nine months or a year, again, this, this is a recipe for disaster. Let's get down into the article, into some nitty-gritty here. They say last week saw $64 billion in commercial bank deposits removed from financial institutions. All right. Yeah, we know that. So I guess what they're implying is that the more of this uh, of these deposits that are coming out of the commercial banking system going into things like reverse repo via money market funds is going to put further pressure on bank lending which would increase the probabilities that this number continues to go down even more. And just to make sure we're all on the same page, that means aggregate demand goes down. If that goes down while the Fed is hiking rates, that, that's, again, where the recession turns into a depression. And I want to give a shout out here. It looks like they quoted Jack Farley. And he has a fantastic podcast, by the way. It's uh, Blockworks, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I, he, he's got uh, Joseph Wang on there, who's a good friend, a Fed guy. He has him on there all the time, and they have really high-level discussions. So let's see. I guess that's a chart that, uh, that Jack actually shared, the one that we showed above. So I want to give him full credit and give him kind of a shout-out there. This is over six times the post GFC average for the month of March. And it indicates banks scramble for cash. It indicates a lot more than that. Okay, now they go into how this trend will accelerate according to Elon Musk. And I'm not sure why he would have any type of insight there. But the main, but we don't need Elon Musk's take on this. All you need to do is look at this chart and then realize that bank lending has dropped the most in the last two weeks that it ever has. And then just think about the fact that 95% of the currency units are created through bank lending. And if bank lending is decreasing, what does that do to an economy that's 70% consumption and an economy where velocity is going down while all the debt is at all-time highs. That's a ticking time bomb. All right, guys, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. As always, make sure that you're standing up for freedom, liberty, free market capitalism. See you in the next video.